Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. I also have a little sickness, so bear with me. This is my outdoor power shed. It holds the electronics for my solar and micro hydro, and uh, I'm wanting to upgrade my batteries from the AGM to the lithium iron phosphate. But the problem is those new batteries have to have a temperature above 32 degrees to be charged. Now I could discharge them down, I think it's 14 degrees, but so I wanted to do today is uh, use a wireless thermometer. I've got uh, the little display here, and then I have two of the sensors. I wanna put one sensor inside the building to see what temperature it gets down to, and one outside of the building, and kind of compare the two. I also need to insulate the floor down here, and so uh, that's kind of the plan for today's video. We will see if I can keep a lithium iron phosphate battery in here, and uh, be able to use it with solar and micro hydro to charge um, and use it in the house. So anyway, let's get started. I used to keep these electronics under my house and it was an absolute disaster. And uh, so now I've got them under here and uh, everything looks a lot better. Yeah, so let me open this lid here. Up here on my hill, I have 3000 watts of solar power and I'm about to add 2000 more watts but that comes down here and uh, feeds into this uh, Midnight Classic over here. And uh, so that's putting out a decent amount of heat. And I'm hoping that right there is enough to keep this little building good. Um, we'll see though. And these also have a little bit of heat. Um, so anyway, um, all of these eight AGM batteries are going to be replaced by a single lithium iron phosphate battery that will have way more power. So um, anyway, it might be worth putting a tiny little heater. I could even put like a little tiny box in here to um, keep it warmer. Um, anyway, we'll see. But uh, what I wanna do is just find a spot like right here and hopefully, um, now one thing to note, I'm gonna be reinstalling the insulation on both sides of the building. So that will cause a factor in the temperature. Um, but I also want to leave one um, out here, and that way I can tell if the difference between the inside and the outside temperature. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully this will reach wirelessly inside. Um, so for the rest of the video, I'm going to uh, insulate these little holes real quick on that side and this side. And then let me show you what it looks like up under here. As you can see, it's just open at the moment. I've got some two inch foam board that I want to use to insulate that. So that is the plan here. Let's go back inside and we'll keep an eye on the temperature as well. There's about a four degrees difference right now between inside the shed and outside the shed. So I think once I insulate this, it actually will be significantly different from inside and outside. For the past two weeks, I've been monitoring the temperature inside of the power shed versus outside. The lowest it got down to out here was 15 degrees and inside was about 20 or 21. So it's been consistent holding it about five or six degrees warmer in here than outside. Now, whenever it starts warming up out, the temperatures kind of swap. It gets warmer out here quicker than it does in there, but that's to be expected. So that is with no insulation of the floor or adding here on the side. So I've got some of this two inch foam board from a uh, project I've been working on. I'm gonna go ahead and cut sections of this and then put it up under here and then add some fiberglass insulation to cover up my vents. And then I'll run the test again. Now, sadly, uh, well, kind of sadly, it's not gonna drop down below freezing for the next two weeks. Um, I'll get to more work I can do out here, but uh, as far as testing out the really low temps, this video may uh, be another couple of weeks long. Trust me, it's just as awkward for me as it is for you. Uh, so I'm up here under the power shed now where I just simply need to take a tape measure. Ooh, squeak. I'm gonna take this tape measure here and see what the cavity space is between these little supports. All right, I found all my cuts and I made a, a little marker here. I'm gonna try to use a razor knife. And if this doesn't work, I've got a, uh, I guess a jigsaw. Most of my tools are not here at the house at the moment. 
currently building a 10 by 12 office for a friend. This should zip through here pretty quick. I'm gonna use a power station to power this tool here. All right, and let's turn on the AC. Okay. Well, it's real tight quarters up under here, but I got this first piece installed. Uh, pretty good fit all the way around until I got to this front corner here. And uh, I'm gonna need to maybe, I don't know, put a little bit of caulking in there or something to make a good seal. But all right, so that is the first one done. I'll move on to the other ones here. Now, over on the other side, I already had some from whenever I built this. And that is just um, a three quarter inch, not the two inch. So I will probably go ahead and just fill those as well. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna do the rest of this without you because it's uh, just real repetitive. All right, it took a little while, but I finally got everything insulated up under here. Flip back around. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that is done now. There's one last thing I gotta do, and that is to insulate those two vents on the top. So let's crawl out of here and get that done. Now there were a couple spots like right here. I could have done a little better job at getting that tightened uh, up. So I may add some either spray foam or some caulking up in there. But everything else uh, seemed to make a pretty good connection. So got cuts all around there. Yeah. Now, in order to get these insulated, I'm thinking about just using a little bit of tape and uh, some R13. I've got some extra pieces in my shop. So this one over here should be pretty easy because it's got that gap in there. Um, but this one over here uh, has the fan in the way. I don't really want to remove that. So I'll probably just have some stuffed up against it and it should be fine. There's enough metal hanging out over here that, that insulation is not going to be getting wet. Just stuff some insulation on that side right there, doing well. And then, like I said, just used a couple pieces of tape up here as a, uh, a low tech solution. And I think that's going to do pretty good. So if I feel right here, there's some pretty good heat coming off of the Midnight Classic. It's got about 200 watts coming in here at uh, four o'clock. And then there's also a little bit of heat coming off of these inverters. Um, not too much though. All right, let's close it up and we will keep track of the temperature. Uh, I've still got it down here on the bottom because that should be the coolest place. And we'll see how this does tonight. It's not gonna be uh, freezing temps for a couple weeks now though. So I'll just still keep track of what the temperature gets to. Well, I've been monitoring the temperature between inside and outside of the power shed, and it has dropped down into the freezing temps. And what I've discovered is that it went from being about five degrees warmer in here than outside uh, before insulating to about 10 degrees warmer now that I have insulated. So, um, but last night it got down to about um, 22 or so. And the problem was uh, 32 is still freezing. So it is still gonna drop down whenever it's cold out. So here's my thoughts for another video is that I have these conduits here and uh, those have various wires in there. And uh, what I can do is maybe put a computer fan on the end of one of these, or possibly even put maybe a two inch pipe. These are inch and a quarter, um, but maybe put a two inch that will go maybe a little bit higher than what this one is and kind of go straight across. And that way I can then uh, turn on a computer fan, like a 12 volt fan, that will just either suck air in or blow air in from the, under the house because it's warmer up under there. So if I could raise the temperature by, I don't know, two or three degrees, um, I don't know, I think that would be enough um, to keep that room uh, warmer. Also, the AGM batteries that I have in there, they only have a certain amount of amp hours and it lasts for, I don't know, an hour or two max whenever the uh, sun goes down. But if I have a five kilowatt hour battery under there and maybe 2K of solar feeding that during the day, then uh, just being able to run the inverters longer during the night, possibly even all night, then it will stay warmer in there as well. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video of insulating my power shed and also testing out the temperature. If you have, thumbs up button, and I will see you in the next video. Fast forward about a month and a half, and let me show you the results here on a very cold day 
with the crawl space now included in my thermometer setup, the outside temperature, and out in the power shed. Under the house in the crawl space, it's 49.3 degrees. The power shed is 22.6 degrees, so below freezing, but the outside temperature is 4.5 degrees, so it is very cold out there. And you can see having uh, almost 20 degrees warmer in the power shed is a good thing.